All right, so in this uh, video, we're going to uh, finally look at some examples. Let's find points at which a function is continuous. So let's consider the function, um, say f of x is, um, I don't know, 3x plus 8 divided by um, x to the fourth plus one. So we want to find all the points at which this function is continuous. Well, this is a rational function. In the previous videos, I said, well, rational functions are continuous on their domain. I think this is the top is a polynomial, it's continuous. The bottom is a polynomial, it's continuous. So we've got to figure out, well, what is the domain? Right? Oftentimes, asking questions about continuity is the same as asking questions about domain. So the skills that you've developed in uh, addressing domain questions, will those same skills will assist you in finding continuity. Uh, so this could be discontinuous um, if we're dividing by zero. Uh, well, so that means we need to ask the question, when is x plus four, or x to the fourth, sorry, uh, x to the fourth plus one equal to zero? Well, this is when x to the fourth would be uh, negative one, which can never happen. Wow, that's really bad penmanship. <laughs> Sorry, but I cannot have something raised to the fourth and equal negative one. So this is never equal to zero, so I'd never be dividing by zero, so I'd say f is continuous um, everywhere. Um, uh, maybe I'll write, use interval notation so it's continuous on the interval negative infinity to positive infinity. Right? It's, it's continuous everywhere. Okay? So that's a continuous question. When is this continuous? It's continuous everywhere. How about um, the function maybe g of x is equal to sine of x? all divided by um, x minus 2. Well, I want to know what is this continuous? Well, this really is a matter of talking about, well, when is sine continuous? Well, sine's continuous everywhere. Uh, and we, again, in the previous video, video uh, we said trig functions are always continuous on their domain, and the domain of sine is all real numbers. This is continuous everywhere as two. It's a polynomial. But uh, the question still remains just like the previous one. Uh, when is the bottom zero? Well, we know that uh, x minus two equals zero when x equals two. So we can't be dividing by zero in this problem. I would have a discontinuity. And so, um, I would say that this function g, so g is continuous um, everywhere except 2. So uh, if I wanted to keep doing the interval notation, it would be negative infinity to 2 union 2 to infinity. Or if I wanted to use uh, set notation, I would say all real numbers except the point 2. Those are good ways of describing all the points in which g is continuous. Um, so let's consider this function similar to the other one. h of x is equal to tangent of x. And I'll still divide by x minus 2. So we know from, our, from just looking at the last problem that x in this problem can't be 2. That would make division by zero. Um, but tangent is not continuous everywhere, uh, right? So um, there's places where tangent isn't defined because tangent is the same as sine divided by cosine. And so really, tangent is not defined when cosine is zero. So when is cosine zero? Well, cosine is zero whenever um, 
x it looks like pi over 2 plus any multiple of pi or rewriting this this is uh, 2n plus 1 pi over 2. These are all the places where tangent is undefined and tangent is discontinuous at all these places. Um, I could uh, draw its, uh, its graph. And we have uh, discontinuities exactly as I said at pi over 2. Um, negative pi over 2, and its graph, just to remind you what tangent looks like, um, looks like this. So that would be tangent, and then it continues on and continues on this way. And then we have these repeated spots where we have discontinuities. So uh, putting this all together, um, we know that h of x will be will be discontinuous, it won't be continuous when tangent is discontinuous or when I'm dividing by zero. Um, so the easiest way to write uh, this, I would say that um, uh, h is continuous on the set, and I'll use set notation x, such that x is not equal to 2 and x is not equal to this pattern right here, 2n plus 1 pi over 2, where n is some integer. So this would be the set of points where h is continuous. It's continuous everywhere except for these places. Um, um, another function uh, we could look at. So, um, uh, an example, let's say f of x is, um, I don't know, x minus 7 over the absolute value of x minus 7. And the top is continuous everywhere. It's a nice polynomial. Uh, so, this is continuous everywhere, this is continuous everywhere, but I am looking at a fraction, and so when is x minus 7 equal to 0? Well, that means x has got to be 7. So we'd have a discontinuity at 7, and so f is continuous on the interval negative infinity to 7 union 7 to infinity. Notice also that since it's not continuous at 7, we could use that to prove that f prime isn't differentiable at 7. That um, since um, f is discontinuous at 7, f prime of 7 does not exist. Going back to our previous theorem from the other video, that if the derivative existed, then it would be continuous. But since it's not continuous, simple argument, it can't be differentiable. Um, so the last function I want to look at, um, and it's we're, we're going to see this function show up um, in terms of integrals, so this is a good place to uh, define it, um, is the um, greatest integer function. And the greatest integer function takes a real number and returns uh, the integer that is closest to it but not greater than it. So this is formally, we would say, uh, the greatest integer of x is the integer n such that n is less than or equal to x, but x is less than n plus 1. So some examples would be the, um, you know, the greatest integer of 1.2 would be, so what's the integer that's just below? So you could kind of think of the, the greatest integer function as the round down function. You go down to the um, 
uh, the integer just below it, so the greatest integer of 1.2 would be 1. Uh, the greatest integer of 1.9999 um, even though this is awfully close to 2, um, 2 is bigger than this, and so this still pushes down to 1. Uh, the greatest integer of, say, pi would be, well, we know, uh, hopefully you know that pi is approximately 3.14, uh, so uh, 3 is the integer that's just below this. 4 is bigger than it, and so 3 is the greatest integer integer that's just below it. Um, negative numbers are a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit tricky. Uh, so negative 2.1, um, thinking of how negative numbers work, that negative 2 is the d integer that's just below it. Um, so I wouldn't go to negative 1, or uh, um, uh, negative, yeah, negative 1, which would be the next one up. Uh, so the greatest integer negative 2.1 is negative um, 2. And um, it'd be good to kind of see what this, uh, what the graph of this function looks like. And so um, let's say uh, this is where maybe 1 is, uh, 2, 3, 4, then this would be 1, two, three, um, negative one, negative two, negative three, this negative one, negative two, negative three. Uh, so this is our, our um, uh, coordinate system. And so all the numbers, if I'm between zero and one, not including one, then my output would be zero. So my graph would just be zero. And then the minute I hit one, the output is one. So I'd stay one until I hit two. So any number between one and two, the greatest integer would push it down. For example, 1.2, which is right about here, I go, it would, output would be one. If I'm between two and three, all of a sudden at two, I would be, output would be two, and then we would go to three, uh, and then three, it's output it looks something like this. And now for negative numbers, between negative one and zero, um, it would be like this. Between negative two and negative one, we have this. And so we get this kind of stair-stepping function. So it's flat, but it takes a, a step. Uh, another name for this would be the stair-step function. Uh, the greatest integer function just kind of stair steps up and we have we can see it every single one of these integers We've got discontinuities and so the greatest integer function um, is continuous so the uh, The greatest integer function is continuous on all reals except the integers. We have to remove the integers. We get discontinuity at the integers. And a question for you. Uh, since it's not continuous at the integers, we know it's not differentiable. However, uh, the derivative does exist everywhere else, and hopefully the graph is obvious to you that the derivative would be zero everywhere, and it doesn't exist at the integers. So again, we'll come back to this uh, greatest integer function when we look at uh, integrals, um, but this is our kind of first introduction to this idea. All right, so we've formally defined what continuity is. Uh, we looked at some examples. Hopefully you're seeing, like, maybe ask yourself, like, what's so difficult about continuity? And the answer is nothing. Uh, you already have a, a general intuition of what continuous functions are. All that we've done here is just formally define continuity, but at the end of the day, all the functions that you're accustomed to, trig functions, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, polynomial functions, rational functions, they're all continuous on their domain. So uh, that's good. Uh, what we'll see as we move forward is that all our theorems that we 
we'll have uh, coming up um, do rely or require that a function is continuous. Um, but that's looking ahead, um, but we now have a formal understanding of what is meant when a mathematician says a function is continuous. That's all for now. Have fun exploring.